Welcome back to the final video in the iterators module. So in this video, we'll finish up by looking at each prior. And each prior applies a function to the prior value in the list. So it's an easy one to remember. Um, we have two options to do this. You can either use this funky notation here, which is our single quote and colon, um, or we can use the keyword prior. So I think prior is probably easier to use since we have the keyword there for it. Um, so how does this work? And I think it's like most of these iterators, it's best explained with an example to illustrate it. So let's do that. So in this example here, I'm just going to pull out um, one at a time because it's easier to see. So for example, and these are just multiple notations and ways to do it. So let's look at the first one first. What this is doing is adding zero to one, and then it's going to add each element to the prior item in the list. So we'll add two to one and then three to two. So if we add 105 here, we're going to get three plus 100 and then five plus 100 here at the end. So you see we get those appended at the end. So each prior basically will um, apply the function to um, adjacent pairs in a list. So whatever your element is and the one before it. And when you don't have an element added front, so say if we use this keyword notation and we pass this in functionally with the plus and the list, it's going to assume zero is the first element. Um, but say, for example, if we started off with an, in, uh, 10 here, you'd see 10 was added to one to start off with. Okay. So a very useful real life scenario where we might apply this is in time series analysis. So you can think, um, for example, if you're someone who's interested in tracking the price of a stock, um, you might want to know when there's changes occurring. So we might do that with a minus, for example. Um, so instead of adding values, we want to see what the difference is. So if we take a similar example as before, but instead of a plus, we have a minus and we get that, we see how much it's changed. So we're able to see from the delta output here, basically there was a big change between three and 60 and it increased quite a lot. Um, and then again, we're just showing you get the same output. It's just a functional notation. Um, so this here um, specific implementation of each prior has actually got its own keyword. So it's so common and so commonly used um, in time series analysis. Um, they created a nice keyword for us to use instead of having to worry about the funky characters, which we're really grateful for. Um, so that's our deltas keyword. And you see if I run it with this notation or I just run the, the word delta or I just run with the word deltas, I get the same result. So this is just gonna give me the difference between each of these values along the way. So if one of them is really, really high, you'll see, oh, okay, this is when my stock has increased massively, for example, and the area I need to look at. Um, and you can do lots of fun data analysis with that. Um, and also, if you just run the keyword deltas on its own, you'll be able to see that it's exactly the same as what we're passing in here. And that's all it is. It's just a handy keyword to do the same job. Okay. So I've got an exercise here for you to try. So you can create a function called my max that will return the max of two inputs, which is fairly straightforward, nothing too new there. And then the second piece here is the bit that is new. So we want you to apply that function. So we're just taking what we learned in our functions module and now combining that with our each prior um, to return the pairwise rolling maximum across the list. So we'll be looking for the maximum between each element and the one previous to it. Okay. You can pause the video and have a go with that. And then once you're done with that, we'll just finish up here um, and point out some further reading. Um, so you might've noticed over on the code.kx.com page, um, we had this maps one, which I pointed out um, and I skipped over this accumulators one. So this is our second type of iterators. Um, we don't cover them in this fundamentals course. They are covered in much more detail in our advanced course. Um, and we actually do have an introduction to them very briefly as part of our introductory workshop. So in the fourth session on functions, um, there was a introduction to both scan and over. And there are accumulating iterators. So go check out that session if you want to know more about them. Um, and also the iterators white paper that I mentioned before is linked here as well. And that's got a very extensive um, 
explanation of everything with lots of great examples. Okay, so that's our introduction to iterators module. Um, so we've covered a lot in that. We went through um, what are iterators and remember we showed that we can do um, inbuilt iteration. Sometimes we don't even need to apply our iterators with our primitives. And then we've got our mapping iterators. So we've got each, um, we know we've got parallel each. So that's the same as each, except when we've got multiple secondary threads set up that will come into effect and we'll have an, a, potentially a performance improvement. And then we've got each both, which allows us to apply each to dyadic functions. And then we've got each left and right, which gives us the ex extension that we're able to apply each to lists of differing lengths. And then we've got each prior, which is really just comparing a value with its previous one. Okay, so while well done in making you through this module, don't forget to check out the associated quiz questions. So just heading up a level again, you'll find them up here in exercises and you can go through them and work on all of those exercises um, just to compound your knowledge and what you've learned here today. Okay, so thank you so much um, and hopefully I'll see you in another module very soon.